We start with the end of the Qaddafi regime. Ayman Moadine is a foreign correspondent for NBC News, and John Heileman is national affairs editor for New York Magazine. Ayman, thank you so much. Just people need to be reminded and clarified. Why did we get involved in the whole Qaddafi overthrow? Well, when the uh, Libyan revolution began, or the uprising began back in February, the Qaddafi regime had seen what happened in Tunisia and Egypt and decided it was not going out like that. It unleashed its military forces on the people there, and it became very bloody. Thousands had died by that point. The Libyan people, the National Transitional Council, turned to the international community for help. They asked the Arab League to get involved. The Arab League asked for NATO involvement, or at least asked for international involvement, which came by way of the UN. And so the conflict internationalized. They made it an international conflict, asking for NATO and the Western countries to get involved and prevent this one lopsided military force from just wiping out all these and, people. And this is a rare phenomenon whereby a, a third world group of countries, the Arab League, the Arab nations said, come in and intervene in the internal affairs of one of our countries. And that's a unique, I think, in the African experience up and down the, uh, Africa, the continent. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a very unique opportunity in which the Arab street is asking for international involvement on the ground. Now, some will argue that the main of what the Arab League asked for and what the United Nations asked for had been exceeded by NATO military involvement. But at the end of the day, what we saw was a convergence of interests that we had never seen before. The people on the streets of Libya, the people in the Arab world, wanted okay. to see the U.S. involved to prevent this massacre. From Gaddafi's gone. He's been a big part of our life going back to the 60s, right? And now, who is anybody in the world going to say the United States did the wrong thing by getting involved? I think the outcome is still too premature. No, they were not going to say that NATO's involvement now was wrong. What's going to matter is how the U.S. takes it from here, what kind of soft power, what kind of engagement the U.S. maintains with the National Transitional Council, with the people of Libya. Are they going to turn their back on them and leave them on their own and let the situation descend, as we've seen in other countries, Afghanistan and elsewhere? Or are they going to remain engaged and see this through all the way until a democratic process is set up? Let's talk about the morality of U.S. interests. Let's talk about the reality of U.S. interests. Americans don't like being killed. Killed. We don't, certainly don't like our people being targeted, especially people in military uniform. This guy, Qaddafi, who died today, killed Americans in a, in a West Berlin disco on purpose, right? He supported terrorists that went out and killed our people on purpose. He had a plane blown up over Scotland with Americans, 189 aboard, on purpose. He is a killer of Americans, right? Yeah, That's who Qaddafi was, among other things. A among other things, absolutely. Was he implicated in the killing of many of these Americans? Absolutely. Pan Am, Lockerbie, as well as the Berlin Disco. Even though the judge in the Berlin Disco said he wasn't personally involved, there's no doubt that since then, evidence has emerged that the Libyan government sanctioned this attack. But keep in mind, in recent years... So he fingered us. Yeah. He basically said, kill Americans at some point in his reign. Well, in recent years, the American government actually was willing to turn its back on it. Keep in mind, Tony Blair... Well, I didn't. Has, let, me, let me just ask you. So when the American people watch this story tonight. Let's look at it from a totally American point of view. Right. We watched the overthrow and killing of a guy who p devoted a part of his career to killing us. He was our enemy. There's no doubt about it. And at the end of the day, that's why the American people will certainly welcome this news or certainly should welcome this news. It came at a great cost for the Libyan people. But at the end of the day, it's beginning a new chapter in Libya in which the United States can benefit from to have a country that is democratic, a country with a traditional amount of resources, but more importantly, one that can share the values of what Americans want, a democratic country, a pluralistic one, and perhaps one that can spring more democracies in the Middle East. This one was not an invasion, as we saw in Iraq. It was an organic okay. movement by the Libyan people. Well, President Obama, of course, talked today at 2 o'clock Eastern about the victims and his comments today on Qaddafi's death. He did remind us of why we were there. Let's watch. For us here in the United States, we are reminded today of all those Americans that we lost at the hands of Gaddafi's terror. Their families and friends are in our thoughts and in our prayers. We recall their bright smiles, their extraordinary lives, and their tragic deaths. We know that nothing can close the wound of their loss, but we stand together as one nation by their side. Well, let's talk about the naysayers. John Heilman, a couple of the Republicans, not the most impressive Republicans running for president, Bachman and Ginrich. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Let's take a look at uh, Ginrich in March of this year going after them, this whole mission, which was accomplished today. Do you think <clears throat> Omar Gaddafi has to go as a result of this military intervention? I would not have intervened. I think there are a lot of other ways to affect Gaddafi. I think there are a lot of allies in the region that we could have worked with. I would not have used American and European forces. 
And here's Michelle Bachman saying she thought the president was wrong to get involved in Libya in any way. And here she is back in March as well in Iowa. Let's watch. Now he has us engaged in yet another third Middle Eastern war. And so I think talk about March Madness. Can anyone say Jimmy Carter? That is insane talk. I mean, the two wars she's talking about, one and two, were started by President George W. She supported that, John. Down the line, in every instance, there she is mocking President, Car- uh, President Obama for getting involved in a war indirectly from behind. Look, you, you, Chris, you, you correctly point out that those are not necessarily two of the most impressive of the Republican candidates. But there is an argument, and there was an argument at the time, not just on the crazy right, but in a lot of other places, that you, you could make the case that, that this was... Uh, a dangerous mission to have undertaken, that the cost might have been proven to be too great. We can't argue backwards from the fact that it was successful to claim that it was necessarily a good idea in the first place. There are people who are going to say that America has imperial overstretch. It's adding the world too many, right. but we should be fighting fewer wars. That's a principal sure. position on, on, on non-interventionist grounds, on financial grounds, on a lot of grounds. You could make that argument. Now, that's not an argument that's necessarily... Why the do they that... begin to make the argument when it's an Obama well, campaign? Yes. Of, of course, of course, that there are many Republicans who are inconsistent on this point and supported previous wars by Republican presidents and now want to attack Barack Obama. I mean, I think the more interesting criticism is the one that you saw around this time when this intervention started, when an Obama administration official in The New Yorker made the comment about Obama leading from behind. And so many Republicans jumped on that and claimed it was absurd, the notion that you could lead from behind. Well, we have seen now that Obama's leadership from, quote, from behind, meaning p- putting together alliances, putting together co Coalitions, yeah. not doing stuff in a unilateral way, but there are advantages to that. And does there are if, if the, goal, the goal of this was to accomplish stopping the slaughter in Benghazi and getting get, getting Gaddafi out, it was successful. And so it, it would behoove a lot of Republicans who made fun of that notion to stand up and at least acknowledge that in this yeah. case it actually worked. And President Eisenhower, one of the most successful foreign policy presidents we've had, did de- de- he had what was called the hidden hand, and he would get things done through indirection. I mean, let me ask you just to finish up here about this. this This campaign was difficult because the mission statement in the beginning was prevent this man from slaughtering his own people in Benghazi. It did grow. Tell me how that happened and how we got to go along with that. How did President Obama decide to go along with the NATO expansion of the mission to getting rid of Gaddafi? Well, it really began with the National Transitional Council in Libya. With their contacts going through the Europeans, going through the Arab League, they asked for public statements of support for the National Transitional Council. The Arab League came out and issued it in saying the international community, the United Nations, must do more right. to get involved to prevent the slaughter. And that's what happened. When that got to the level of being uh, an international conflict, the United United States took the lead. Uh, the United Nations passed a resolution that allowed or authorized the protection of civilians by any means necessary. And in this case, the only international organization that can do that is NATO and the United States. And that's what happened. That's what led the United States to get militarily involved in this operation. Are we going to do anything in terms of Egyptian decision making with regard to Mubarak? Are we going to get involved? Will we let them execute him? Will we stay out of that if that comes to that? Well, this is going to be very interesting to watch. The United States has tremendous influence over Egypt because of the two billion dollars of U.S. taxpayer right. money that goes to the military, and more importantly, because of the relationship between the two militaries. The United States has to exert more influence on the Egyptian military to allow a clear democratic process to take place. So far, the Egyptian military has completely derailed it, not to the extent that okay. the Egyptian people want. So, Back to sheer, sheer politics yeah. here. My, check me on this. I don't think a lot of these decisions the president makes with regard to even catching bin Laden and killing him, bringing down Gaddafi, him having been killed, getting al I don't think they have a lot of immediate effect on the polling. But I think come the debates of next fall, when the president gets in that pit, basically, with one of his opponents, won't it matter a lot that he's been successful as a commander in chief? Well, I, look, I think that presidential elections, as you know, Chris, are about character as much as anything. And to the extent that Americans have, American voters have doubts about the president, I think a lot of them have to do with their notion of whether he's a strong leader, whether he's optimistic, whether he's effective. In all of these areas in foreign policy, he has been decisive. He's been effective. He's won. He's, he's done things that others before him could not accomplish. And so I think in terms of helping him on the character front, making him appear to be a strong leader, yes, all these things are going to help him in a general election for sure. 
Although I do not imagine that on the specifics of foreign policy, Republicans are going to have much to work with. I mean, yeah. he, there's not going to be Republicans are going to try to wage this campaign on the economy because that's where the president sure. is vulnerable. But on the question of character, I do think these things were bound to his benefit in the long run. Now, I think in the end, if it gets close, just a political assessment, yeah. if it gets close and it's 50 50, people go, you know, this guy running against Obama is not that great. The economy is really bad. I can't figure this. But he has been a pretty good commander in chief. I got to give him that. That kind of thing matters. Thank you for coming. I mean, it's great to have you. I'm in Maudine. And thank you, John Harmon.